so so Amy and I are here with Jack Sim, and Jack's a bit of a hero of mine actually. And I know a lot of people around the world who have really been influenced by Jack in a big way over time. Um, but it would be great. And you've, you, Amy's never met you before, and I wondered if you could if you could tell us a bit about what you do. Oh, so basically, uh, I started the World Toilet Organization uh, in two thousand and one when people were not talking about toilets. And it is a really, really uh, taboo subject. And what we need to do is to get all the people to talk about it's such a natural thing. We have to go there and we're in a state of denial and we pretend that we don't have anything to do with toilets. So, so sophisticated. But um, once we start to put humor into the subject, it becomes very, very interesting. So we call ourselves the WTO, like a World Trade Organization, and it's so funny, and we went into the press, and the press love it. So we turned a subject that is very quirky into a very sexy subject, and we became a media darling, and we talk about um, everybody has to poop, and uh, we visit the toilet six times a day, spend three whole years of your life in the toilet, and people are laughing, and then um, we show how people uh, use the toilet, how the ladies um, do kung fu stamps, and why guys don't wash their hands because uh, uh, the, the hand dry is too far away, or takes too long, or it's too hot, and all that. So, getting this toilet message that is not directly linking the poor, but to get the middle class people to start to orient themselves. Uh, makes it very very palatable <laughs> and of course um, the, a lot of photo angles that are really funny also and from there on the advocacy work moved into very very shocking messages like 40% of mankind have no toilets and people are saying are you sure it's 2.6 billion or 2.6 million so that kind of uh, show you that people are so ignorant about the, the size of the problem and then this diarrhea death and uh, so many children just die unnecessarily from there. And I then travel and take photographs and all that. But before, before that, how do I start the World Toilet Organization? I realized that there were 15 toilet associations around the world without a headquarters. So all I had to do is to tell them, uh, would you like to have a headquarters? And they say, as long as you do it for free, we'll join you. So that's simple, right? Now we've got about 200 chapters in 56 countries. So membership is free. As long as you share the same mission, you're on. So, uh, and it's been, I, I think, one of the things that is especially interesting about the way that you've approached this is how you've been able to mobilize lots of people. And I don't ever meet people who are connected to you that aren't just amazing, positive, really dynamic people who seem to understand how to communicate these ideas and um, you know what and, and get the message across. And I mean, how do you find them, or do they find you? Um, so basically, um, what the world has been doing is to talk about sanitation. Uh, in a very academic language. So nobody understands them. In fact, when you go to some of these uh, seminar rooms, you will find that there are language that you don't understand. And the fact that I have not uh, been to university before uh, makes it much simpler because I don't know how to use uh, academic jargon. I can only speak layman language. Well, you're, you're a businessman. I like, was a like businessman. Previous, yep, sort of by trade. <laughs> yes, uh, from 25 I started business and I retired at 40 with enough money to live the rest of my life. And I start to think, what shall I do? I've got to die at 80 and I've got 40 years to use. The last 10 years I'll be walking very slowly, so probably about 30 good years. So now I've already used up 12 of that 30 good years, so I've got 18 more years to do the social work. And I find it very meaningful because we've got only one try, right? Only one life, and uh, if you don't use it properly, it's finished. So I calculated now, maybe I like have 9,000 days more to live, 
and tomorrow I have 8,999 days. So it's no use trying to to buy a Louis Vuitton or drive a Mercedes. It's better to do toilets. <laughs> <laughs> and I, out in what I think you know, Amy and I, because we spend a lot of time in immersed in worlds like Twitter and uh, yeah. <laughs> sort of with, with blogs and things. I, I do feel that. There's a, a lot of people can participate now that couldn't before. They'd send their CV off to an NGO and hope to get a letter back, you know, get a, an internship. But they can now be more active online and find other people. And yeah. that seems to be something that you've managed to get to grips with. Yeah, I, most of the time, the things that I do, I don't know very well the technicalities. Just I like get other people who are cleverer than me and leverage their volunteer time to do it. So World Toilet Summit was also the same. We do it for free and the show organizer, professional event organizer will underwrite it. And if they make profit, they take it. If they lose money, they still have to deliver the event very, very professionally. And uh, we have World Toilet Day. We declare 19 November World Toilet Day and the whole world is celebrating it. We just checked on Google, 13.4 million mentioned on the web, oh and like hundreds of unique uh, journalist reports. So it's really fun to be able to create things out of nothing, and to be able to communicate messages that touches people and get them into action. So now we are trying to, advocacy is very successful now, and we're trying to create um, sanitation marketplace by getting business people to come in, produce toilet sanitation system and sell and distribute. So I think that uh, donation cannot solve this problem. Yeah. So the only way is to, is to get business to come in. Great. Well, Jack, thanks. And it's, it's great to see you. Thank you. Thank you.